local broadcast of the joy of painting is made possible by our members in partnership with the Prescott House Nursing Home, located in North Andover, Massachusetts, and owned and operated by the Solomon family. Friday at 9, it's Cinderella in the make em break em days of Hollywood. Will she get the part? Her leading man. It's the American TV premiere of Nuri F. Cinderella, Friday at 9. Then Monday at 8, David Attenborough hosts the First Eden, the Mediterranean, nurture of civilizations that worshipped it, exploited it, fought over it, and now degraded. A gift to the world we're working to save. The First Eden, Monday at 8. That's Nuri F. Cinderella and The First Eden. They're coming up on Channel 2. This is member-supported Channel 2, the best television on television. Major funding for the Woodwright Shop is provided by State Farm Insurance Companies. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Additional funding is provided by this and other public television stations. Good to see you again back here in the Woodwright shop. I'm Roy Underhill. Hope you're feeling good today, because we got some good stuff to do. We live simply here in the old shop here. Old Edgar and I, we amuse ourselves. We, we'll just sit around for hours telling old uh, Prince Albert and the jar jokes, just laugh and laugh. But after a while, even sophisticated humor like that gets to be a little bit old, and we have to start thinking about others. What can we do to other people to bring a little bit of elevation into their lives? Well, we start making toys. That's what we do, don't we, Edgar? Yes, we do. Here's one I have got that we are going to see how to make. We're going to see how to make three different folk toys. Now, this is, well, Edgar has, have you seen this before, Edgar? You have. All right. Well, he's going to pretend like he hasn't seen it before. This is called a fish hook. And it's a, well, the idea is it's a little block of wood here, and you can see it's got a, a hook on the end. See how this has a little hook right there? Can you see that, Edgar? Oh, yeah, he sees that. All right, that hook is to go around the little rubber band. You can see there's a rubber band that goes right through the middle there, and this goes in the hole. And the idea is to catch the hook on the rubber band. Now, it's a tough reach there, so it's hard to do. You've got to reach in, grab it on the hook, I got it, All right, and pull back out, and it snaps back in. See? You got to reach in with the hook, pull it out, and then ah, it snaps back in. Now, what Edgar doesn't know is it's impossible to hook the rubber band. It's a trick, of course. Edgar, what you don't know is that there's no way you can hook the rubber band. The rubber band is, in fact, a dummy. And what you do is you challenge people. You say, try and do something that's impossible, and they sit there trying to do it. You can do it, but they can. They say, what the heck's going on? Well, rubber band is a fake, a fraud, a sham. Pull that out. See, that doesn't even go through there. What makes it work is the fact that you're squeezing on this thing like a watermelon seed. See? You squeeze on it, and it shoots in like that. See? You can even shoot it straight up in the air. Let's see if I can do it. Whoa! Flew away here. Well, anyway, what you want to do uh, to make this, just like a watermelon seed, easy to make. The hard part about this is to find somebody who hasn't seen it before. But let me tell you, there's one born every minute. So let's see how to make this thing. It's uh, just a block of wood with a hole drilled through it, and you've got to get these rod aligned with the top here. You want them to be centered. So how are you going to do that? Well, what you can do, of course, is drill it all of a piece. 
see? This was one piece to begin with. You drill the hole, then saw it, and then put the rod in. All right? So that's what we're going to do. Here's a block of wood, 7 8 inch square, about 4 inches long, and it's all one piece. So what you want to do is put it up here and see I've got a hold fast. This is kind of a hook, and I tap it down. That's what grabs it on the bench. And now here's a drill. You set the drill right in the center, and we'll drill on down. I want to get to a quarter-inch drill in this one, this 7 8 inch square. And you can make it any way you want to, but that's the way I'm doing it, 7 8 inch square. And uh, just drill right on down the middle. Four inches long, quarter inch drill. And who the heck came up with a dumb toy like this? That's what I want to know. It's making it's the easy part, figuring out where it came from is something else. I mean, it's the old thing of shooting a watermelon seed, isn't it? You know, you squeeze on it and it pops out at somebody. But uh, it's funny, you think, now, a folk toy, who would invent that? It had to be after the rubber band, I, I would think. I don't know, I don't know when the rubber band was invented. But one thing that's curious with a lot of these folk toys, they're associated with the Appalachians. Uh, up in the, you know, say, well, they, they were making these toys up in the mountains. Well, for years and years, decades, centuries. But what actually happened, a lot of these were done. There you go. I'm going to keep on going down, of course. I'm just going to do that far. A lot of these toys were actually done by the WPA during the Great Depression. Uh, people would come up with something that people could do up in the mountains and sell in the cities and make a little bit of money and something they could transport easily. It's the same thing that they do in the uh, Alps in Germany. Uh, of course, the mountains in... Uh, Europe, the toy makers live up in the mountains, easy thing to transport. Now, I want to bevel it down, of course, get that bevel that makes it shoot like that. So what I'll do is cut it with the saw and just cut diagonals, four diagonals, in just shy of that uh, hole that we have drilled there. Very neat, quick thing to make. And it will drive some people absolutely batty, too. You get to... Uh, young kids who've never seen this before. That's what's wonderful about youth. You've always got new victims coming along for your gags. The dumb jokes. It's new to them. Life is always going on. There we go. Two bevels. Ah, two bevels. All right. Oh, I cut too far in. That'll be all right. Though. So what we do is just saw these and then rasp down to it. Ah, ah. A little pen and saw. There we are. One more here. I'm trying to hook these against the bench stop. Ah, 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 da, 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 da. There we go. See, now we got that beveled around. Now, I'm going to take the rasp. Now, this is one of the essential tools of a toy maker, is a fine cabinet maker's rasp. I'll just set this over the end of the bench so I can clear down and just round with a rasp. This is a very fine tooth rasp. You don't wanna, they're expensive too. You can't uh, buy a whole bunch of them. Get a fine one. See, and it's round on one side and flat on the other, and that'll let you do a very, very smooth job. It'll barely need any sanding, but it does have to be finished very, very smooth in order to shoot out of your, out from between your fingers. There you go, kinda round it over. All right. And of course, you do this while it's still connected. This is uh, one uh, principle that goes all through making stuff. Leave it long and don't cut it off until you absolutely have to because, well, you need to hold. You're always having to hold the work, aren't you? Well, leaving it long and then cutting it off only later is a principle that goes through blacksmithing, uh, any kind of carpentry, stuff like that. Very, very important. Now, here, I'll just saw it off. And you can imagine if we'd sawn it off, we got gotten the steps out of order. Uh, it would be much more difficult to do that uh, kind of beveling and everything. And that's what's neat about making these toys or anything. You're having to figure out the sequence uh, of the puzzle. It's like, what will, what's the best sequence to do these things in? All right, now, that's it. We got the hole through. And of course, now the holes are perfectly aligned. The holes are perfectly aligned. And you can take a, a bit of rod, quarter-inch rod, and glue that in here rasp it down around here and that will fit inside there and there you go all right now let me get the finished one so you can see the finishing steps here all you got to do of course you carve the little uh, hook thing that gives the illusion of hooking on the rubber band and the rubber bands of course are just dummies see 
It's just a little piece of rubber band held by a dowel, so it looks like there's something to hook onto. And this goes in here like that. And you say, hook it on the rubber band. Ah, ah, ah. There you go. Ah. Maybe not, huh? All right, well, I've got another one. We've got a bunch more we can do. Uh, in fact, there's one that Edgar likes a whole lot. I don't know why, but Edgar just loves birds. And here are some right here. These are my buddies. These are the chickens pecking. You've seen this toy. Now, this is, I believe, a European uh, origin design. The chickens pecking. You've got to wait there, and the chickens uh, peck as you swing that pendulum around. The way they work, of course, is, Edgar, do you like, Ed Edgar wants to get into the act, too. So there's the, all the others. He's hungry. Yes. What fun. <laughs> well, just like Edgar, these guys work off of the strings. When the weight uh, is on, when the weight is on, the head goes up. See, a little string accutates, pulling down on this string here, makes that head go up because it's pulling on a little cam. Well, I tell you what, let me set it over on the workbench, and we'll see how you can take this thing apart and see what we got to do. Because we've got to make the birds and put in the cams and stuff. Look right here. You can see the way that comes out there. There's a little slot there. And the bird has a, uh, I don't know what you call that, a cam. But anyway, there's the string pegged in right there, a little hole and a peg to hold the string, and a little groove for the string to run in. And it goes into a slot. And here's a pin that goes through. And there you go, and you see when you pull on the string, pulls the head up and gravity makes it come down and peck away. There you go. And it sits on a little uh, dowel there stuck into the bench top to make him work, to make it, give him legs. There, or her, or whatever it is. All right. So, we got to make the birds and make the cams and the joints and all that stuff. But first, of course, you have to design it and uh, just draw it out. Easy. You draw a bird. And the simpler, the better, because it's a folk, it's an abstraction, isn't it? Let me show you. Here's a, um, but there is a trick to it. Like everything, you need a sequence. You need to do these things right, and this is fun. You've got to draw the bird um, on two sheets of paper. You don't just draw it on one. Draw a double layer. See, I've already drawn one here, but ignore the bird behind the curtain there. All right. So I've got to draw another one. You draw it on two sheets of paper. And normally, I'd sketch this out a little better, but... Draw it on two sheets of paper because you want to cut them both out. There's coming up to the tail, see? And a fat breast down there and coming right up a little pert tail there, and that's where the pin will come through. And you're going to cut the head about like this. But of course, there's the cam that goes back inside. Let's see if you can see that. There's a cam that goes inside here. So if we had just one sheet of paper, let me see, and I've done it out of one sheet of paper so you could see. We do it out of one sheet of paper. Remember, we've got the cam concealed inside. Now, this is like hidden line drawing in um, uh, drafting or something like that. You've got the cam inside, but this actually goes around like that. How are you going to show them both? Well, you cut both pieces of paper out at once, and you make one like this, a little bit different bird there. And on the other half, the underneath piece, you leave it whole. In other words, you don't cut out a piece like this. So you've got the two templates. Ah, that's, that's, well, that's, that's a pretty simple thing to do, isn't it? But it sure makes it a lot easier when you come to transferring these pieces onto the wood. All right, and that, of course, is the next step. We take the uh, pieces of wood. And here, I've got the tools right here. Well, just transfer them onto some half-inch thick maple. Now, I usually work with, we don't have hard maple growing around here, so I don't get much of it. Now, hard maple is like sugar maple. You know, it may be growing as a street tree somewhere. Somebody may have one, and, and you get it that way. But you don't get it uh, much around here. Black cherry, uh, that'd be good. But hardwood, you need a hardwood that will um, hold up and click. You can't use uh, something like, oh, uh, a pine. A pine would not, would not click real well. So half-inch maple, you may have to rip it down. Now, we're going to cut this out with a coping saw. Here's the pattern on there just taken the, uh, the paper pattern and traced it on there. And of course, you try and interlock them. That's always neat. And make the grain go with the shape. See how the grain of the wood goes this way with the length of the shapes there. All right, and then interlock them and cut them out with, of course, a coping saw using a little uh, sawing uh, table like this. And one thing that helps a lot is run beeswax on your blade. People forget to uh, lubricate these hand tools. And the beeswax will help keep the coping saw or any saw from grabbing in the wood. Now, I've got this cut out most of the way. I'll just cut it out the rest of the way. 
Like this. Coarse tooth saw. Real coarse tooth coping saw so that the pattern cuts out pretty quickly. You cut with too fine a saw, you'll be there all night. There we go. There's a head. Let me continue around and finish this tail while we're here. And I first saw these uh, chickens pecking. I'll never forget it. My sister was always picking up uh, things like this and bringing them to us. She brought us, uh, I, in fact, I remember we were in uh, my parents' bedroom and she'd come back from school and she brought us the little chicken's pecking toy and that, that was neat. Well, there's the head. We have cut it out, a little head uh, for the bird. That's going to be the cam. Now, body, I've got an extra body over here. All right. And what we want to do is refine the shape a little bit. See how the cam will go inside there. Want to refine the shape of the body a little bit and then cut the mortise and tenon kind of uh, inside and outside pieces that fit there. But to refine the shape, again, great tool for the job if you're going to be a toy maker, uh, is a fine cabinet maker's rasp like this. In fact, let me see if I can do it from around here. Now, what I'm going to do is set it against the end of the bench. And by laying it on the end of the bench here, let's see it just peeping over the top, and then running the rasp almost flat on the bench top, uh, the back of the wood is supported and should not splinter off near as badly. And it kind of holds it square. And it's a fast way to work because you can move and you have access to the whole piece. And the cabinet maker's rasp can cut very, very smoothly. There we are. See? Rasp out the head. I'm going to refine the beak a little bit. It's a lot of fun. Very fast thing to do. All right. There you go. And eh, not bad. Pretty good. Right. Little birdie head. Now, we've got to join them together because they ha interlock. Let me show you again. I'll bring this one over. Show you again this one back here. You can see it. Uh, the way we've got the piece inside and the piece outside. Uh, they've got to cut the slot now. now. Let's do that first. Cut the slot that the head goes into. You can see how that goes around. It's a slot cut through there. And then we've got to cut down the sides of the neck of the bird to make the uh, tenon that will go inside there. Easy to do. Of course, you make a whole bunch of these uh, things at once. You can cut out, I guess, one big long bird and then cut off slices to make them. But nevertheless, we want to make the slot. And we don't want to get, uh, get everything out of the way. All right. Now, I'm going to do this with a little tenon saw and just hook it right over the edge of the bench. It's tough to hold it now, but I'm going to try and cut a groove now down the bottom about an eighth inch in from either side, which, of course, in a half inch piece, it's going to leave us a quarter in the middle. I'm going to try and get this a real good grip on this piece here. Set it like that. There we go. And just saw it down. So you do need a tool. You need a uh, fine-toothed saw. I'm trying to think of these uh, toys uh, being done with uh, very, uh, what should I say, simple, accessible tools. Uh, you do need a fine tooth saw, but certainly you could do this with the coping saw, couldn't you? So as long as you've got a coping saw, and I think a cabinet maker's rasp, there's not much limit to what you can do. There we are. I'm going to cut and not talk for a second here. I'm going to get this cutting done. There. All right, nice, nice. Right down the edge. Don't need to lay this out. You can just eyeball it. There you are. slots right down the side. Now, we're going to take a chisel and remove the wood from inside. See? Now, if you're uh, getting going to be, eventually you're going to be a grandparent. Sure, let's face it. Uh, you're going to have to know how to do this stuff, how to make toys for the little ones, so you might as well start now. So, think of this as a training for grandfatherhood, I hope. Or maybe you won't be your own biological grandkids, but listen, there are plenty of kids who need this sort of thing. And it's a good thing to do. But, but you know, what's missing here? And I think what's missing is the kids in the shop. They're out away. And what's always fun is when they're here working along with me. Let's see. And you cut right on down. That's all right. 
They'll be back. They love to come and do this stuff. And one thing that's neat, you know, that big block of uh, beeswax, this is very frustrating. These tools, they see a grown-up doing it, and the little kids can't do it. Very, very frustrating for them. And one thing I found that's neat is, or actually they found that's neat, is this right here, this uh, block of, uh, what, it beeswax. The kids will come in and drill in it, and they'll plane it, and they'll do all kinds of stuff. They're able to use all my tools on the beeswax and see how it works. And of course, it doesn't hurt the tool. They get a lot of satisfaction out of it. It actually helps everything out all around. So good soft block of beeswax is neat for the kids. Well, there's this slot. Here's uh, the head. I've got another one. Let me go ahead and cut the... Uh, tenon that goes in there with this one. Again, with the tenon saw, you could use the coping saw. I'm just going to set the saw right down on the neck of the bird. It's upside down to you. Here we are. Cut in an eighth, eighth of an inch, All right. and then flip it over. Cut in another eighth of an inch from the other side. Don't cut the head clean off. And then from there on, it's just a chisel job. You just hold the chisel on here and chisel away. You could saw it away, whatever your preference is in these sorts of things. I would prefer, however, a little wider chisel. So I'm going to get me one. Here's one. A nice chisel. Oh, I broke off that bottom. Ah, sorry. But if you did it with um, pine, you know, it wouldn't hold up. It would be even worse, you know, that, that kind of breaking. And that's something I think people forget. Uh, they'll make, uh, they'll use old orange crate wood or something for toys just because it's th thin. And that's fine. It's good for carving and stuff like that, for cutting faces. But uh, it doesn't hold up under play. And you got to think, <laughs> listen, uh, toys have to be made... Uh, sturdy and rugged, so you know, hickory and hard maple and stuff like that are great for toys. Let me get the cabinet rasp. I think that's a good way to do this here right now. And just lay it down flat and smooth it off. So that cabinet rasp is real handy. And I got, let me explain, as people have heard me go on and on and say, well, don't use rasps in your work. Don't use rasps. Well, I always say that when I'm teaching because uh, the rasp is a, is a real easy way out. And I want people to learn the grain of the wood, you know, to go with the grain of the wood. And a rasp is, uh, really can get around it. There's nothing wrong historically with it, and it sure does get the job done. But to understand the material, I think it's better to uh, use something that requires you to go with the wood a little bit more. That's where I'm coming from on that. Now, I've got a little drill. I want to drill the pivot hole now. This is uh, called an Archimedes drill. It was a little... Oh, let's see if I can get that held up there right. Archimedean drill. See how that goes up and down. I'll just drill this hole through first. Let's see if I can get this to work. There we are. There's the hole through the outer parts. And then I'll just start it in this one. And for a pivot, I'm going to use a piece of copper wire, some heavy gauge copper wire. Hold still. There we are. Now we're through. Now, one thing you have to do, of course, is give clearance on that pivot. Hinge is funny. You can't just have square corners put a, a, a pivot point in and expect it to work. They've got to have clearance. Let me show you. I'll cut out a piece of wire here. And, uh, ah, come out, come out. Cut out a little piece of wire. This is just heavy gauge copper wire. Now put this through there. And let's see if it'll go through both pieces. Come on. Needle nose, noodle nose, pliers. And uh, see what's happening? It's hitting right there. See, it can't clear. So what I've got to do, you can see, you want to clip off the wire, of course. Uh, there you are. That's hitting right there, and it can't go around. So what we've got to do is, again, take the rasp and round it off, and that will allow it to pivot. And so you're going in an arc around that pivot point. And that's what's going to make the little fella work here. Let's see. Now, that should, if we go through again, uh, and I think this wire is actually a little bit too tight to go through. But anyway, that will, let's see. Here we are. Ah. Now, that'll pivot around like that. Now, all we got to do is put a hole right here, 
we'll drill a little hole with the same drill right back into the uh, pituitary gland, I guess it is. Uh, put the string in there. Let me bring the other fellow in here and bring it in where you can see. Uh, here's a good one. Uh, yeah, right here. A little peg stuck in the back. And that, there's a tiny little hole and a peg, and the string goes down into that peg uh, hole, and that's what holds it. So when the string pulls through the bottom, the head goes up. You can see on the bottom where the string comes out, and the head going up, and that's connected to a weight down here, so that when you shake it in a circle, all the chickens peck in turn. So, easy thing to do. And this I say, this is Edgar's favorite. Edgar, you love these, don't you? These guys are your favorite toy. Yeah. Well, they're uh, uh, nice to do, but what if they're a little bit too trouble? What if you're in a real hurry for something to do? Ah, and he dreamed a dream. And behold, a ladder set upon the earth, reaching unto heaven. And behold, the angels of the Lord ascending and descending upon it. Yes, it's Jacob's ladder. Here they are, flip-flop blocks. Edgar, you like these too, don't you? He's not, Edgar's not very religious. I don't think I am either, but there you go. This is called Jacob's Ladder and a uh, tumbling toy. Watch how the light blue one goes all the way to the bottom, doesn't it? Does it? No, it doesn't. All right, very, very simple thing for you to make. This is one somebody else made using colored blocks of wood. I'll show you one I've been doing. I've got, uh, well, here, let me put this one down. I've got another one I made, and I made it too tight. I had not made it. It was a very, very simple thing. These. Oh, let's see. I made this one too tight. You almost have to force this one. Watch this. Now, this just has colored ribbons, so seasonally appropriate, perhaps. See them ascending and descending upon it. There you go. Just blocks of wood. <laughs> you have to shake this one. That's a little bit more involvement. But it's got the red and green ribbons to get this color. Do you like this, Edgar? Yes, he does. He loves it. All right. Let's see how you lay this out. Real quick, simple thing for you to do. You want to make... A uh, Jacob's Ladder, a real good thing. Cut a bunch of blocks of wood. Here they are. And you can cut a bunch of them. You can make it real big. You can make somebody the biggest Jacob's Ladder on earth. And the way you lay the ribbons out is you put two on one side of your first block. See? Just lay it down on the table and nail them on. There's two little nails in each one of these. And you lay this over here and this over here and this over here. See? And what you're going to do is make, just like making a Dorbish tort. Now, I don't know who the heck invented this thing. Hard to figure. It's probably an accordion maker somewhere. Now, these come back this way. And you see, it's just this system that goes all the way up. You make a sandwich, laying the two one way and then the other. Then lay on another block of wood. Now, of course, paint or sand or do all that stuff to it uh, before you start doing this business. Because once you make this stack, what you're going to do is nail it together. Let me just do one more block and I'll hold it up so you can get the idea how the principle of this thing works. Now, you'd stand this up on end like that and just nail it. Just nail the ends together right here and that's it. And you can see it'll kind of do <laughs> what you want it to do. All right. Well, pretty simple thing. All you got to do is nail the things together and it makes a Jacob's Ladder. Wonderful things to make and you made it yourself. So. Listen, hope you enjoy making them. This has been Roy Underhill here in the Woodwright Shop along with Edgar. Thank you very much. See you next time. So long. Tonight at 8, we're making for a warmer home on this old house. Then at 8.30, Say Brother looks at the black political agenda in America. And at 9, we have mystery for you. Inspector Morse is back to discover who did in an American tourist at an Oxford hotel. This old house at 8. We'll see you then. Major funding for the Woodwright Shop is provided by State Farm Insurance Companies. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Additional funding is provided by this and other public television stations. Roy Underhill is the author of The Woodwright's Companion and The Woodwright's Workbook, published by the University of North Carolina Press and available at bookstores and libraries nationwide. If you've made your pledge to Channel 2 recently, 
Well, thank you. And remember to rush that check into Channel 2, Boston, 02134. But if you haven't made your pledge to Channel 2 already, there's still time to make your year-end contribution. Please call now at 492-1111 so that you can support the best television on television. Thank you. High-tech boomerangs that keep coming back. Why wool prickles, but luckily not always. And of course, kangaroos, platypus, and koalas. On our All-Australian Discover the World of Science. Discover the World of Science, next Wednesday at 8. Local broadcast of Sesame Street is made possible by our members in partnership with McDonald's restaurants, which take pride in bringing quality children's programming to New England. Ready to do a TV show here. I am. 